<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> I bet you have a great birthday. Uh, when is your birthday? November 8th, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to see everyone here uh, today to um, discuss the release of the district's annual audit for uh, fiscal year 2013, uh, the, of course, the CAFRA, the Comprehensive Annual Financial uh, Report. Um, today, I'm excited to announce that at the close of fiscal year uh, 2013, the District of Columbia has achieved a fund balance of $1.75 billion, uh, the highest in the district's uh, history. Uh, taken together uh, with the fact that the district also has the best bond ratings in its history, um, I think it's safe to say that our finances are, are now the strongest uh, that they ever uh, have been. Uh, with this welcome news, I look forward to uh, leading our contingent, uh, this year's contingent, to Wall Street. And together, Jack, we will pound the table for a bond, a rating increase. <laughs> um, when I took office, um, I made restoring fiscal stability to the District uh, of Columbia my uh, top priority. Uh, I inherited a general fund balance that had been spent down uh, by the previous administration from $1.5 billion in fiscal year 2007 to uh, $930 million at the end of fiscal year 10 and was budgeted uh, in that fiscal year, uh, fiscal year 11, to uh, plummet to $705.1 million. Uh, that is a staggering 53 percent uh, decline. Uh, overspending my district agencies was rampant uh, across the government, with spending pressures averaging uh, hundreds uh, of millions of dollars uh, annually. And I'm proud that in that first year we were able to not only show a surplus, but we were able to raise enough money to be able to not have to spend down uh, the fund balance uh, as originally budgeted. Um, we did it by reducing expenses through difficult cuts and by finding uh, efficiencies within government agencies. Uh, I made the tough call to strategically raise some taxes to balance the budget, which we haven't done uh, again since, and I established a spending pressure task force uh, to ensure uh, agencies did not uh, exceed their budgets. Uh, these measures have been immensely successful, and I'm proud to announce today uh, the complete turnaround of the district's finances. Uh, we have fully rebuilt the district's fund balance uh, beyond its previous high during the uh, Williams administration, and spending pressures have been uh, completely eliminated. Uh, it's incredibly important to understand uh, the fiscal year 2013 surplus of $321 million does not mean that we can go on a spending spree. Uh, in fact, only $9.6 million uh, was actually added to the locally mandated reserves as otherwise uncommitted uh, funds. While the increase to the locally mandated reserves was modest this year, it still represents the highest amount of cash on hand uh, in the district's history. Later, um, our CFO, uh, Jeff DeWitt, will explain the importance of having uh, adequate cash on hand uh, to reduce our short-term short -term borrowing uh, costs. Uh, in fact, we borrow trans, uh, which he'll talk about as a way of being able to fill those, those gaps. Um, off the top, <clears throat> our $321 million budgetary surplus is reduced by $78.5 million, which is needed to implement required changes in new accounting rules. Therefore, the district surplus um, under GAAP, or generally accepted accounting principles, is only $242 million uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the, the $242 million surplus. It's allocated as follows. $99. million will be set aside in the bond escrow fund, which is required by law, so we can continue uh, capital improvements across the district, including the full modernization of our public schools. $96.2 million is carried over from fiscal year 2013 uh, to this fiscal year 
uh, to cover uh, planned uh, expenses. And $96.3 million is in dedicated non-lapsing funds that are legally required to go to specific purposes like the Anacostia River cleanup. In fact, it's just a whole host of funds that are laid out, most of them relatively small, uh, but they are for dedicated purposes, and um, we obviously are obligated to be able to keep those uh, in place. Uh, thus, after the uh, necessary mandated accounting adjustments, uh, placing portions of the surplus in funds legally required for special purposes, and setting aside funds to be spent in the uh, current fiscal year, we are left with only $9.6 million in otherwise uncommitted surplus, which is transferred by law to the district's locally mandated uh, reserves. Uh, while this is a day to celebrate, I want to quickly uh, explain why it is important to not get complacent, but instead continue to be financially responsible. Uh, the importance of having an adequate fund balance was never more evident uh, than during the uh, recent federal government shutdown. Uh, during that period, um, working with lots of folks around here, I, was, uh, I declared all D.C. personnel uh, essential and continued vital city services to district residents uh, in an uninterrupted uh, fashion. Uh, this would not have been possible uh, if the district did not have adequate reserves uh, to draw upon, and that's because we could not tap uh, into our budget, and therefore we filled the gap with the reserves that we had amassed over a period of time and covered the 16 days of the shutdown uh, with our reserves, replacing those funds um, with, uh, with the budget dollars uh, once we could access uh, our dollars. Um, maintaining a strong fund balance and a 12 percent debt cap also allows the district to continue to achieve higher bond ratings. With the recent upgrade by Standard & Poor, uh, all of our ratings are now in the AA category in our general obligation uh, bonds. Bond ratings are important because higher ratings lower the district's borrowing costs, um, so less money uh, is needed for interest payments and more money can be uh, used to deliver services or to provide tax relief. I also want to make another exciting announcement um, today. I'm joining with Council Chairman uh, Phil Mendelson and uh, with Ward 5 Council Member Kenyon McDuffie uh, to announce that we have worked out an agreement um, on how we will apportion funds once the uh, service accounts reach the recommended level of two months' cash uh, on hand. This language will be included in the Budget Support Act that I will submit uh, to the Council along with my fiscal year 2015 uh, budget. First and foremost, uh, we're making a historic commitment to affordable housing by dedicating 50 percent of uncommitted surpluses uh, beyond the recommended levels uh, to the Housing Production Trust Fund. This funding stream will allow me to complete my pledge uh, to create or preserve 10,000 uh, new units uh, of affordable housing and maybe we'll be able to do even more uh, by 2020. Secondly, <clears throat> we will dedicate um, 25 percent of the future surpluses to increasing our D.C. Retiree Health, Retiree Health Benefits Fund, uh, which is referred to uh, as the other post-employment uh, benefits uh, fund. Um, that will allow us to get to uh, having a full 100 percent of funding of our benefits. We're in pretty good shape now, but we can do even better uh, than where we are at this point. And then finally, 25 percent of uh, surpluses will be used to uh, reduce debt. Uh, by shifting from borrowed funds for capital project, projects to pay-as-you-go um, funds, uh, capital funds. While it may take a couple of more years before the district reaches the recommended levels of cash on hand, this structure will put in place a fiscally responsible plan for future surpluses. And I'm sure Chairman Mendelson and um, Councilmember McDuffie will both want to add uh, their own comments to uh, how it is that we're going to be able to move forward uh, on this as they uh, speak later. Um, I'd like to thank our CFO, uh, Jeff DeWitt, uh, who is still brand new uh, to the District of Columbia. I also want to thank Dr. Nat Gandhi, um, a man who I worked with the entire time I've been here. Uh, he worked for 13 years as the CFO 
uh, to the District of Columbia and just did an extraordinary job, in my opinion. Um, while I'm glad to see uh, Jeff come, I think we got a great CFO in him. I don't mind saying I hated to see Dr. Gandhi go. Um, he is a great professional and he's somebody who I like uh, immensely. And um, I already told him that as soon as he rests up, we're going to find a way to keep him involved uh, in the District of Columbia, uh, continuing to uh, help us. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, the Office of the Inspector General, uh, led by uh, Charles Willoughby, um, Ron King, the Chair of the CAFRA Committee, and the Independent Audit Team at KPMG. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank my own budget team, uh, including our City Administrator, Alan Liu, our Chief of Staff, Chris Murphy, and uh, our excellent Budget Director, Budget and Finance Director, um, Eric Goulet, who really has done just an exceptional job. Uh, Eric, thank you very much for the work that you've done. It's a delight to be able to work with you uh, every day. Um, so I uh, would ask all of you to stand, those of you who are here, and uh, be recognized. You can stand up too, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, in any event, with that said, um, let me now turn to our um, Chief Financial Officer, uh, Jeff DeWitt, who will go into further details. And then I'm going to ask uh, Chairman Mendelson, Councilmember Evans, and uh, Councilmember McDuffie in that order to come up and uh, make some comments. So again, and after everyone speaks, uh, we'll open it up for whatever questions you may have, uh, first of all. CFO DeWitt. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I want to thank the uh, Mayor, members of the Council for their support. I also want to thank the staff from my office, uh, in particular those from the Office of Financial Operations and Systems that prepared the financial report. Uh, I got emails from them late, late at night, uh, sometimes 2 a.m. in the morning. They've been working long weekends, long hours, and I appreciate their work, the work of their staff, and the associate CFOs and all the agencies that did all the work that it takes to take a very, very complex organization and prepare this financial report. This is a very complex op operation. It takes a lot of people to pull this information together and, and put it together. Uh, Bert Molina is here today. He's a CFO controller. Bill Slack, the deputy controller, if you two want to stand. Uh, these are the two guys that, uh, and their staff that uh, pull all this together. Uh, and I greatly appreciate their efforts. They were late at night getting the thing printed, so we'll have copies available uh, later today. And later today, you'll be able to get a copies of the annual finance report at uh, uh, cfo.dc.gov. You can, you can get a copy of that online. Uh, as the new CFO of the, of the district, I reviewed our financial uh, status closely. And no matter how you look at it, uh, the numbers in the district are, 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 are excellent. You can look at the bond ratings. You can look that our assets are higher. We have our assets exceed our liabilities. Our revenues exceed our expenditures. Uh, we have a billion dollars of work in progress that was done in 1213 of construction that's going on in, in the financial statements. You can see that. Uh, no matter how you look at it, this is a very unique situation where every element of the financial statements are excellent. Uh, and, and that is, again, it's an exciting read, I promise you. If you want to go out and pull that off and, and read it, you'll, you'll enjoy it. I know I have for the five times I've read it now. Uh, but every way you look at it, it's, it's an excellent, excellent position. And, and one note that the mayor mentioned, uh, you know, you think about the, the federal shutdown that happened, and we were draining through our uh, federally mandated reserves, and we were, we, were, we were drawing through that. Those are full. The federally mandated reserves are full. The, uh, the uh, fiscal stability reserve that we have is full, and the cash re reserve is about 52% full. And when that fills up, as the mayor mentioned, they're looking at policies in place to how do you dedicate these funds. Coming from, from, another, coming from the outside and walking in, what's really unique about it from both a CFO's perspective and from the perspective of the policies that are in place, whenever you're going through the accounting exercise and you see the surplus, every bit of it's directed to a policy commitment, a legal commitment that that helps preserve the financial status of the district. So that is, that is really relatively unique. You know where the money is going, you know what it's being used for, and that's a great story when you go up to Wall Street and you talk to the rating agents and you say, we're putting aside revenue for these emergencies. We're making sure that we have the cash we need to operate. And, and you'll hear some people say, well, why do you have so much cash? Why do you need to have $1.75 billion in reserves? Shouldn't it be used for something else? 
Well, keep in mind some of it's for debt service. When you issue when you issue bonds, you have to set aside an amount for debt service, and and you do that to make next year's debt service payments. That gives you that high credit rating. That gives you cheap, uh, inexpensive borrowing costs, which gives you more programs for for other things that the district needs. The other thing that the, the mayor did mention is, and, and I'm not sure a lot of people understand this, every year at the beginning of the fiscal year, sometime around October, November, we go out to the credit market and we do short-term borrowing, which are called tax revenue anticipation notes. Because you think about the District of Columbia, a lot of our expenses happen at the beginning of the fiscal year and our revenues come in around April, May through our property taxes, income taxes, and things like that. So we actually run deficits in the beginning of the year that we have to borrow and then we pay back at the end of the fiscal year as our revenues come in. As these reserves get full, the, the, uh, the cash flow reserve, which is about 52% full, as that gets full, we're going to be less and less reliant upon borrowing from the capital market. For example, if you go back several years ago when the reserves were a lot lower, we were borrowing $800 million from the capital market to pay our day-to-day -day expenses that we paid back at the end of the year. This November, we borrowed around $400 million. So that's been cut in half from the lower point of the reserves to today. And you get to the point where that reserve fills up, we would not be exposed to the capital market. So there's two things that are important. You think back to 07, and, and you have to think about you know, what you have to deal with. Go back to 07, if you had a poor credit rating, the market shut down on a lot of people. So there's two really great things about, about the District of Columbia we all should be proud of. We have a high credit rating, so we have access to the market. We have low borrowing costs. And we're building our reserves, so we're even less and less reliant upon on, on that short-term borrowing. And that's something that people need to understand why those reserves, why those reserves are important. Um, you know, the goal is to provide the most efficient financial operations possible. And and one thing I just want to say is, I, again, I've looked at these things over and over again, and that we should all be proud of here in the District of Columbia. The financial picture is very good, and once moving forward, I'm very honored to to walk into a situation like this where you have something that you can, in a good position, you can move it forward and make it even more efficient. And, uh, you know, as, as the mayor mentioned, I want to thank my, my predecessor, Dr. Gandhi, for all the work he did to put things in place to make this, uh, to make this picture what it is. And, and it's my goal to build and expand on it. So when you're, when you're really, this weekend, I, I ask you to go log on, print that thing out. It's, it's a really, really exciting read, and be glad to answer any questions you have about it after you read it or, or a little bit later in the press conference. So thank you. Super Bowl, read right? it during the Super Bowl. Great idea. <laughs> Halftime reading. There you go. I'm not sure what to say about our enthusiastic chief financial officer who's read it five times and is recommending it for Super Bowl reading. <laughs> but I guess that's what happens when you've been on the job for 672 hours, I believe, <laughs> since January 3rd. I, uh, I do want to thank uh, Jeff DeWitt, our Chief Financial Officer, and also join with the Mayor and uh, Jeff in acknowledging that, Gandhi. This really is the, uh, the last, what do I want to say, the last statement for his, from his tenure because, uh, as we know, Nat left the government uh, at the end of, of calendar year 2013, but this report is through September 30th, 2013, so this is uh, his doing. And I want to thank him for that and the many years of leadership, financial stewardship for the district. This really is good news, as uh, the others have said. Um, and it's a clean audit. Even though it is a clean audit, the council will have hearings on what I expect will be a few significant deficiencies, I think that's the term, which are um, uh, issues that the auditor identifies uh, with uh, some of the operations, not so substantial that they are considered, uh, what is it, material weaknesses, not that, and in fact it's been a number of years since we've had any of those. The audit really is an insight into um, the operations of our government, and that's a good thing, uh, and the council is going to take advantage of that to look closely at where there are areas that the auditor has identified where we can do better. And even saying that, uh, just to echo what the mayor and what uh, the chief financial officer has said, we really are doing so much better than other jurisdictions. Our reserves are at one and three quarter billion dollars. Our pension fund, which wasn't mentioned, is over 100% funded. Our other post-employment benefits fund is, I believe, the second or third best funded in the country, even though I've been... Um, uh, making a number of statements about how we have to improve the funding in that. And I appreciate uh, working with the mayor uh, and my colleagues in ensuring that we um, improve the funding ratio for that. But it still is among the best in the country. Our revenue growth 
is very healthy. Uh, so there, there really is good news here, even though, as I said, uh, this is an opportunity to examine more closely where we can make some improvements because there's, we're, we're never going to be perfect, but we can, can always continue to strive in that direction. One other point that I want to make that uh, has already been said is that uh, even though it's a $323 million surplus, it's all spoken for. Um, we've only been able to grow the uh, cash contingency uh, by a small amount uh, with this surplus. And uh, I fully support the objective that others have said and that we've said over the years that we need to grow our reserves to the point where uh, we meet the, I guess it's the GASB recommendation for roughly two months of operating costs um, in our, in our uh, reserves. Um, as the chairman of the council, of course, I'm only one of 13, but I will not support using our reserves for operating expenditures. We need to build the reserves because of the many advantages from doing that. And I believe that as we look at the uh, many needs that um, the mayor and the council have identified and that we struggle to uh, fund, that we can f uh, fund those needs by continuing to look at our um, operating revenues uh, to, to find relief within our revenues and to uh, be able to improve the delivery of social programs within our revenues and not be looking to the reserves or looking to uh, tax increases. So this really is a very good picture for the district with still a lot more work to go. Thank you all. Yes. Um, yes, the mayor is reminding me that, the, <laughs> as he said, uh, I. I am I'm part of this initiative working with Kenyon and I believe uh, uh, Jack Evans is joining us in this. Uh, with regard to future surpluses, after we have built uh, our reserves to the sufficient level to be putting uh, future reserves 50% aside for affordable housing, there is so much of an unmet need with regard to affordable housing to continue to buy down the liability, if you will, for the um, OPEB, the other post-employment benefits fund and uh, to uh, use the remaining 25% for debt avoidance. I think that's a very good strategy and important that we announce it today rather than uh, in the future when um, it's, it's always harder in the moment to sometimes um, uh, have the correct policy as opposed to doing it with some foresight. And so I'm, I'm pleased to be joining with the mayor and my colleagues on that. Good morning. Goodness gracious. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I thought this was a good occasion to be here this morning. Good uh, morning, Council <laughs> Member McDonald. I'm excited to be here. I don't know about you all, but I'm excited to be here this morning uh, to join uh, Chairman Mendelson, uh, Mayor Gray, Councilmember Evans uh, to announce uh, uh, the agreement that we've got and how we uh, spend the undedicated uh, surplus funds. Um, I also want to recognize uh, Councilmember Anita Bonds, who's, who's also here uh, this morning. The, the district has seen, I think, a tremendous amount of progress over the last few years, and I'm pleased to, to be a part of that. Um, I was just chatting with the mayor, and you can, you can look at how we've attracted, and we continue to attract uh, thousands of people here to the city. I think it's still 1,100 net new residents coming to the city per month. Uh, educational outcomes are improving. Uh, we're putting people back to work. Um, but the reality is, though, that the district continues to become an increasingly unaffordable place to live. And that's just part of the progress that I think we're seeing, uh, but it's one of the, the, the outcomes that we've got to try to do a better job to address. And I, I've used my legislative perch to aggressively pursue an affordable housing agenda, uh, which I think is critically important. If you look at some of the numbers, you'll recognize that uh, since the year 2000, half of the low-cost rental housing in the district has been lost. Uh, and over the last 10 years, Rents have greatly outpaced incomes and wages uh, here in the city, uh, particularly for those uh, at the lower end of the economic ladder, uh, which is why it's critically important that we have proposals like the ones that we have today uh, to try to address the, the needs that we have uh, with housing. Uh, if you look at what I've been trying to do over the last a few months, uh, I've introduced three bills directly designed to address the issues around affordable housing. I think one in particular is the Housing Reduction Trust Fund Supplemental Funding Act of 2014, which I introduced at the last legislative meeting, which Councilmember Evans and a couple of my colleagues co-introduced. Uh, what it would have done, uh, would it, it would have dedicated 25% of any undedicated surplus funds to the Housing Reduction Trust Fund. 
And I thought it was a great idea when I introduced it, uh, which is why I am uh, immensely pleased to be here today to announce with the mayor and the chairman and, and Councilmember Evans that uh, we're going to try to do that, do one even better to make it 50 percent of any undedicated surplus funds to go into the Housing Production Trust Fund. Uh, we've got to continue to take bold steps like this one to make sure that we can preserve housing here in the district for individuals and families across income levels. I think it's something that is a priority uh, for residents across the district. And clearly, when you look at the folks who are standing here, this is the city's leadership right here. Uh, it's clearly a priority for us. And so I'm just pleased to be here with my colleagues uh, and Mayor Gray to announce that here today. Uh, and hopefully, uh, we'll get the support from folks on the council. Thank you so much. Before Jack speaks, I just want to acknowledge Councilmember Anita Bonds, at large Councilmember. I neglected to introduce you earlier. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm uh, also very pleased to be here uh, with uh, Mayor Gray and Council Chairman Mendelson and my colleagues uh, to announce the uh, $320 million uh, surplus this year. Um, it's uh, very, I hope you all have what I think we now all refer to as the Gandhi chart. Nat uh, <laughs> Gandhi made this famous and uh, from henceforth, I would like to dedicate this to Nat Gandhi, so we can always re <laughs> refer to this as the Gandhi we'll chart. Be, we'll <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff, thank you for continuing the Gandhi chart as well. And uh, it's interesting, I always like to point out, my career on the council spans the Gandhi chart. I started right here in 1991, and here we are 23 years later. So uh, I was here during these little troughs we had down here. Uh, and. Uh, certainly through the uh, ups and then the back downs again and now the back ups again. And uh, so I'm very pleased that uh, today is a, uh, a very positive note. I do want to start by thanking our mayor, Mayor Gray, who when he did become mayor, as he pointed out, we were in a down and it's been nothing but up since. And uh, we are now at a record amount and uh, that's a, a major achievement. So Mayor Gray, thank you for leading the, uh, the charge on that. And uh, of course, Dr. Gandhi's been thanked, and I want to continue to thank Dr. Gandhi for his efforts. And, uh, and Jeff DeWitt, our new uh, CFO, I'm very excited uh, with your presence here now. We've had a number of discussions. I believe our finances are in very, very good hands. And so as we move forward here, again, we are living in what is the most dynamic city in America today. Uh, on a financial side with one point now seven five billion in the bank, 16, now 17 balanced budgets in a row, no unfunded pension liability. I mean, what, what more could you ask for? And our challenge as we go forward now is to make sure the prosperity that we are enjoying in this city is shared by everyone, and that's something that we are all dedicated to, uh, to making happen. Uh, so again, I want to thank everybody for this, uh, this effort. The, it's been mentioned a couple of times, so I'm going to now mention it probably for the fourth time. Um, we don't have $320 million to spend. And I can assure you there will be colleagues of ours who will say, I've heard this before, it's raining, so we need to spend the rainy day fund. Uh, we have $1.75 billion. Why aren't we spending it? And it's such a misnomer when that is tossed out there and the general public will pick up on that and say, yes, why are you hoarding the money when it should be being spent? I think it's been explained three times now why this money is not available to be spent. So I'll add my voice to this, that this money is not available to be spent. It's in reserve funds. It's in places that are required by gap accounting, by bond rating agencies in order to keep the city on a firm financial footing. We were going back up to Wall Street on uh, February 19th to meet with all three bond rating agencies. We have a fabulous story to tell. And as the mayor said, we will pound the table again and demand that they increase our bond rating uh, into the point we are now at the double A uh, situation with all three agencies. And we are poised to go to the double A uh, either plus or double A one is what they call it that then sets us up to go into the AAA the following year. So I'm very, uh, I'm very hopeful we can achieve that and again, uh, bring down our interest costs and keep the city moving forward. So again, thank you all very much. I want to thank uh, all of our speakers. Jack, I want to thank you for your long service uh, to the city. And it was an interesting way to put it. Look at the chart and you'll see your service, right? <laughs> I think now clearly the longest uh, tenured council member uh, in the history of the District of Columbia. And so I want to 
I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to serve uh, with you uh, every day. Absolutely. We have, we and we're still running. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, Jeff, if you want to come on back up, uh, we'll be happy to uh, entertain any questions that you all may have. Uh, at the risk of being redundant, I want to underscore what everybody has said, and that is we don't have $321 million uh, to be able to spend. <laughs> uh, our bond escrow fund has demands. There are budgetary demands for the current uh, fiscal year. We got $36 million of obligations uh, in there. We call them O-type uh, funds, other type funds. Uh, those, it's, it's almost as if I put $10 on the table and I say, you know, here's $10, but you got to spend it on um, that chair right over there. And you can't do anything else but spend it on that chair. So I don't want to be simplistic uh, in terms of the illustrations that we're using, but uh, Jack is right. Uh, we will hear somebody say, uh, Three hundred twenty-one million dollars. We got to spend that money right away. It's raining. Yeah, it's raining. <laughs> A storm. <laughs> All right. Any questions? <laughs> Sam. What about uh, traffic fines? I'm, I'm just interested in that because you know a whole new list of them. I guess are going to start tomorrow. Uh, are you? Does this budget involve a lot of money from tickets? Um, I don't know. We can find out for you, Sam. I will say this, though. Don't forget that um, this, in this, within this past year, um, I lowered, uh, working with the council, lowered the amount of many of our fines, and we actually raised the speed limit, which reduced in, by tens of millions of dollars the amount of revenue that was being collected, for example, from, uh, from speed cameras. So it isn't as if you know, and I know you've heard this before. It isn't as if we see it as a cash cow. I, I always see it as a, as a way of enhancing public safety uh, here in the city. And we tried to demonstrate that by, um, by lowering uh, the amounts that people were charged uh, per offense and then, of course, raising the speed limit, which gives more latitude for people to move around the city without the risk of, being, uh, of getting a ticket. Talk about uh, there's a bunch of homeless people and they're being right now in, in motels. How is this going? Money going to be used for them? Well, we we've we've made it clear uh, that you know we are continuing to support uh, affordable housing, which I think is one of the answers to this. We're creating more housing, uh, and then secondly, when you look at the expenditures of the District of Columbia. Um, I think when we started, we had a budget for homelessness of about $85 million. And then you have to reduce that by the loss in federal funds. A lot of people don't realize how much of federal funds we lost, us and other jurisdictions. Um, but yet we're up to $120 million uh, in spending on homelessness. So we're spending money on homelessness. We continue uh, to be able to do more and more creative things for people who are singles and on the street. Uh, I would invite some of the media to come out with us uh, on a very cold night. Uh, we were out uh, to do the point in time uh, count. Uh, what was it? Wednesday night, I think it was. And um, <clears throat> we went on the warming buses, which is a new phenomenon for us. And the buses that I was on, were they were filled. Uh, there were two buses at 17th and 8th Street that were filled. Um, and go out and talk, uh, you know, some night to the people who are on the streets. Very, I found very few people who are actually from the District of Columbia. Uh, they are people from, you know, faraway places in the U.S., some of them from Cuba, some of them from African nations. Um, I was glad that Deputy Mayor Otero was with us the other night because we had a whole group of people, seven or eight that we encountered, all of whom spoke Spanish, and she speaks Spanish fluently, and she was able to communicate with them and actually able to get a couple of them to, um, you know, come on to the buses uh, as a result. So, you know, maybe it's the, the allure uh, of the, the nation's capital that brings a lot of people here, but we are attracting a lot of people who really are not indigenous uh, to the District of Columbia. So we're continuing to invest. We've uh, gone from about nine-plus million dollars to over $21 million for uh, permanent supportive housing. Uh, we're continuing to invest in rapid rehousing. Uh, we're investing in, in emergency rental assistance dollars in order to be able to keep people where they are so they don't uh, get evicted. 
And um, we know that we are still, you know, swimming uh, upstream in order to be able to uh, address the challenges associated with that. Yes. Um, so there hasn't been an unreserved surplus since fiscal year 2008, correct? Um, when is it projected that we'll have an unreserved surplus again so that the 50 percent can start going towards affordable housing? Well, I think we have gone up. Uh, I think we, we were up to about 47 or 48 days of, um, of operating cash, I'll call it. Uh, the operating cash this year has gone up, but when you compare it to the expenses um, that we're incurring, we may actually have gone down a day or two. Uh, so let's say for sake of argument, we're at 45 uh, days uh, of operating cash. The goal is to get the 60 days uh, of operating cash. Uh, we, we were hoping to that we might cut that in half uh, during this, this, this uh, audit period. But we, we, uh, we didn't. Uh, we think maybe a couple of years, but that, we'll just have to see, you know, how all that unfolds. Yes, Aaron. Does the uh, trajectory that the city seems to be on now for the past few years uh, suggest that in the next budget there'd be any talk of a tax decrease? The tax it could be. It could be. Uh, you know, we had the Tax Revision Commission that Mayor Williams uh, ably uh, chaired uh, on our behalf. Um, they've come up with a number of proposals. Um, they presented those proposals to me. I think they're presenting them to the council. Is it next week? Next week. Next week. Um, so there could be, Aaron. I, I just don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, we've certainly got things that we want to fund uh, also, like continuing investments uh, in education, uh, the adequacy study that we completed. Uh, will have to be looked at. Um, and again, as you've heard each one of us in our own way mention, affordable housing uh, is another issue. So it'll be a balancing act. You know, where, where can we provide tax relief um, and where do we want to make continuing investments uh, in the quality of services uh, here uh, in the city? One of the things I think is important to recognize is that we have, without a doubt, the lowest property uh, commercial, excuse me, lowest residential property tax rate uh, in the area. 85 cents per $100 of assessed value, which I think the closest one is, I don't know, Montgomery County with, uh, is it Montgomery County? Huh? Arlington. Arlington, okay. How much is the pill? Over a dollar. Okay. Yeah, it isn't even close. So I'm not sure we get a lot uh, from that, uh, but there pro there's some other areas that we can look at um, also in terms of potential tax relief. But at the end of the day, not to make this simpler than what it is, it will be a balancing act, and that is how much should we continue to invest uh, in services uh, and in, in, in improving services for people uh, in the city and, and, and hopefully helping people who, um, you know, who otherwise might be priced out of the city to be able to stay in the city versus tax relief. And that's the balancing act that we will uh, continue to engage in. All right, thank you all very much.